So this is part two with the results of the charge and discharge of uh, GBS batteries. And also at the end of this video, I will uh, um, show you the difference between uh, GBS and A123 system. It's not really a fair comparison since these batteries have different capacities and uh, a bit different chemistry but as you will see uh, the chemistry seems not to be that important since the discharge and charge curves are quite similar and um, this is the first one uh, for the GBS battery and as you can see with blue this is the discharge voltage of the GPS battery and um, it took just uh, over two hours since this was about uh, 0 0.45 C I wanted to get to 0 0.5 C to be as close as possible with the discharge curve of the A123 system but um, it just happened that the inverter was quite uh, more efficient than I expected so um, it was only 0.45 C discharge rate. Now um, the yellow line is the capacity and as you can see it's not really 100 amp hour at least from my test I, I stopped the discharge when uh, first cell reached 3 volt I don't want to go lower and as you can see from this uh, voltage curve even if I will have went lower to maybe even 2.5 volt it will not have been much more capacity in this battery so uh, it will still have been under 100 amp hour um, coated spec so um, I don't know if these are new batteries or what's the the problem with them or they they don't met the spec I don't know anyway um, it's still a good battery I'm I'm happy with uh, with the purchase but um, next uh, graph is the charge and since I only have a 4 amp um, 4 amp uh, power supply constant current power supply I, I actually it's 5 amp but uh, since it will have worked for about 24 hours I didn't want it to to go to the 5 amp limit so I limited to 4 amp the same as uh, I did for the A123 system battery anyway um, so it took about 23 hours to charge this it was running overnight and the, um, the charge curve seems to be again quite similar with the A123 system battery and I was putting in the battery during charging again about 91 maybe 90 98 90.6 I think I don't remember exactly a bit under 91 amp hour so um the charge discharge efficiency is quite good since the um, internal resistance it's uh, is small and uh, talking about the internal resistance I tried to measure that using the um, you, you see in this graph that I used uh, a load uh, it's a two-step load it was the hair dryer with about 350 watt uh, on low and I think 1200 something watt on high and as you can see on low I have 15 amp and about 50 I think 53 amps on um, on high and also I was disconnecting the the load the hair dryer but uh, there is still some current like a bit under 2 amps which is uh, what the inverter requires even if you don't have anything plugged in and um, if you make the calculation I already did this and you take the, 
the difference in voltage between uh, a hair dryer disconnected and then the hard hair dryer on high and you take this voltage uh, voltage drop on these batteries and uh, then um, you divide it by the current and then again you divide this number by 8 because I have 8 cells in series I get about between 1.8 and 2 milliohm per cell and this is um, quite close if not exactly with what it's uh, in the spec in the spec it's 1.8 milliohm for one of these cells so uh, at least for uh, internal resistance it met it mets the specs even though um, the internal resistance is is actually higher than for a123 cells the a123 cells have 0 0.5 uh, milliohm uh, per cell but um, I didn't actually test it but I believe this to be true since they produce almost no heat. Um, I also measured the temperature but it was not in the video. Um, the temperature at the end of the discharge, uh, the discharge was around 40, 41 amp uh, for two hours and uh, at the end of the discharge the temperature was about 39 uh, degrees Celsius so just just over a body temperature you could not you can feel there were warm but just uh, not that much and this was only at the end of the discharge because um, the heat accumulated uh, the batteries are quite large and until they they can uh, hit the entire mass of the battery it takes some time so this temperature was only at the end of the discharge Okay, um, next you see the comparison, like I promised, between A123 cell discharge and uh, GBS battery discharge. Uh, both are uh, 8 cells, so uh, that should be quite similar. As you can see, probably also because, the, um, because of the internal uh, resistance, the A123 has a bit probably I think 0 0.3 volt higher uh, this, uh, voltage during discharge than uh, GPS batteries but other than that the, the discharge curves looks quite similar and as you can see even if you charge the, the battery at as I did at 3.5 or 3.55 volt um, there is very little capacity uh, over 3.3 volt so um, per cell since as you can see in just maybe 3 to 5 minutes the voltage will drop from 28 or 27.5 down to about 26 26.5 volt and also at the end of the discharge the the voltage will drop quite sharply so there is not much um, energy and it makes no sense to go lower than uh, than 24 volts so, or 3 volts per cell it makes no sense to go lower than that you will not get much more from the battery and you will just maybe probably short the battery life anyway the recommended discharge rate uh, discharge uh, is just uh, about 80% of the capacity so you should stop the discharge somewhere somewhere in this area in order to have the uh, 1500 or 3000 uh, cycles depending on the type of the bat of, of battery uh, the manufacturer uh, spec says they can work at but um, this is it's harder for me to test uh, the claim that uh, A123 will be able to discharge at 80% 3000 times and um, the GBS uh, it's only half that so only 
1500 discharges and this is probably due to higher internal resistance and the heat that will gen be generated inside the battery but uh, I think it will also um, depend on the discharge rate so um, let's see the, the charge curves I mean here again uh, I, I only had a 4 amp um, power supply so the um, the the A one two three system had uh, since he it had only twenty amp hour much smaller capacity was able to be charged in uh, just over four hours but uh, I needed uh, twenty three hours for the GBS battery but if I will stretch this this curve it will again look quite similar as you see there is a um, a blob here the the voltage increase increases sharply at, at this point but this again true also on the GBS battery just that it's not so visible because of the longer charge time but uh, it should be quite quite similar this is all uh, about this uh, this batteries I don't have anything other to show you the um, the raw data will be again in the um, video description so you can take those and do your own graphs or your own comparisons and um, in the end uh, it's I could not uh, say that one battery is better than the other it's just that um, probably if you want to have high discharge rates like using on a bike on an electric bike or on the car uh, probably a123 cells will be uh, much better because of the small internal resistance and they will be able to deliver uh, high discharge rates and but for um, for my application um, the GBS will do as good as a123 system because the discharge rate will be uh, most of the time under 1C so uh, the internal resistance will, will not be that important and the advantage is that um, I can get uh, much larger cells and are much easier to 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 connect they came they come with uh, connectors and everything you, you don't need to build a, a case and to deal with um, uh, strange connectors or on the A123 cells so um, that's all thanks for watching and if you have any any questions please leave a comment and I will do my best to to answer